Okay. Linda, does oh. that have a coffee flavor to it? No, it's bitter. It's cacao. It's like really, really dark chocolate or unprocessed cocoa would taste, which is why I add like the extract and the stevia. Now, bitters are really good. This is off topic, but I just feel compelled to share it. Bitters are really good for digestion. If you have digestive, you know that you're taking the bitters, right? So anything bitter. So when I make it sweeter, that it's going to take that component away because the whole bitterness will stimulate your digestion, right? But if you can stand it without sweetness and just um, have it, it's a great thing for digestion, but it, it tastes like hot cocoa, you know, or, or well, bitter <laughs> until you put the sweetener in it. Okay. All right. So that was my way of giving people some time to come in. And what I wanted to talk about today, first of all, I just want to thank you for being back. And has anybody practiced either the heart math or healing codes since we first talked about them? Yeah, you inspired me to get back to using my inner balance. So I've been doing it every day. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, and good. I only lost a little bit of, <laughs> I'm looking at my progress from before. And, and yeah, so it's been interesting to look at it again. So interesting. So the inner balance, if you weren't here on Monday or you don't remember, it's that thing that clips to your ear and you get an app on your phone and it will track and you can record, like you can look back over three months, which it sounds like you did and see how you're doing. And so your heart, you had lost some coherence, like your stress levels, your nervous system, I should say, your nervous system started to creep back into being more stressed mm -hmm. regularly. Is that what you think happened? I mean, it's not, it's not huge. It's, it's very small, but you know, it still, it still did happen. And yeah, it's, it's just the point of when we, and you know, when we think we're just doing life and we think everything's fine, but things are going on. And then that's what I love about that app is it gives you the visual. Like you look at it and you go, oh, okay. So, all right, anybody else do any of either one? I did the breathing and then I did the healing codes again last night before I went to bed. And I found it very relaxing. Good, yeah. That's the point. Good. Okay. So you want to just continue that over time. As I said, I did it for three months, a few times a day, but I was like, I was sick. You know, I had health issues that I was committed to reversing. So just look in your life and see what you can commit to. Okay. All right. So let's move on to today's conversation. And Today's conversation is really about like the intention of my program, my 10 week intensive program is to examine the core beliefs that stop you from living powerfully in your life. So they're the, the core beliefs that block you from having access to moving forward into your health, which may sound like, what do you mean my beliefs affect my health? But they do. Um, a little bit about that but your core beliefs that block you from moving forward whether it's health whether it's relationships whether it's just joy in your life or you feel trapped in a job you know whatever it is we have beliefs that block us so that's the intention and the outcome that i am hoping to provide for people and there's a strong health background to it of course but today's conversation is about really one thing which is transformation because that's what we're looking to do is transform who you are and how your body is in the world. And so transformation, when we look at nature, we see transformation, like you can see it visually, a caterpillar to a butterfly, right? A butterfly shows up where it wasn't there before. So tadpole to a frog. There's places in nature that you can visually see a whole transformation in, in what's there. In human beings, the transformation is not visible like that. It's not a physical transformation, although it will affect your body physically. But we're, what we're talking about is not something that you see, or it's more difficult to see in people's lives. So in you and your life. So before we jump in, let me first tell you what transformation is not, okay? Transformation is not positive thinking. It's not affirmations. It's not insights, like having an insight about something is like, oh, that's really interesting. 
Okay, that's an insight. It's not knowledge. It's not changing anything. So those are all the things that transformation is not. It's not fixing something. It's transforming you and your life, even if nothing else changed. Okay, so even if not one circumstance in your life ever changes from today, you can be transformed in your experience of how you're living and how you're feeling and how vibrant you are. So when I say it's not knowledge, because that's pretty much where people go to, right? I'm learning something new. That's knowledge. Mm. Look at all the places where you have knowledge, but it doesn't make a difference, right? Like, you know, you should drink more water. I just looked at my water and thought of that. <laughs> you know, you should floss your teeth twice a day. You know, um, you should exercise. You know, you should wear sunscreen. And maybe you're doing some of those things sometimes, maybe you're doing some of them none of the time, but knowledge doesn't transform our life. We know it and maybe we do it, maybe we don't. So the world that I wanna unfold, and I'm giving you a piece of it now, like a tip of it, but the world of transforming people's lives and their health is really, it's the, the genesis of creating a new realm of possibility for where people live. So let me say that again, transformation is the genesis of creating a new realm of possibility. So that's like, okay, there's a couple big words in there. Genesis, if you look in the Bible, Genesis is like the book of Genesis is where God created out of nothing. So there was nothing there before and boom, he created the world. So a Genesis is a creation out of nothing you could say, um, into a new realm of possibility. So that means a place that hasn't been possible for you up until this point or up until you can see it. So it's a place that you didn't even know existed. That's what transformation is, okay? So it's something that wasn't available to you before or possible for you before. That's transforming you and your life. And again, even if we don't change any circumstances at all, your marriage, where you live, your job, even your health, even if none of that changed, you can transform who you are in your life. So you can draw this in your notebook or I have this like whiteboard wedged in here. Let's see if I can make it work with this camera. Okay, this I wanna come a little more this way, right? So you can just follow along or you can write in your notebook. But I, if you um, got the email that I sent last night, I said, think about something in your life that you'd like to change. So does everybody have something that they want to just as the backdrop of this conversation? So you're not just sort of watching the conversation, but you're actually applying it. Does everybody have something? Yeah. Does anybody want to share what it is? You don't have to. Okay. Sure, I'll share. So I'm kind of wavering between, so I'm, I still have some gut health issues, but um, I guess the biggest thing is um, I was raised in a family where worry was, you know, how you showed you loved people. And I'm tired of carrying that much worry for my kids all the time. So I, I, I think it's a big thing that I need to transform for myself is is worry okay. okay awesome that's a good one all right so just think about the thing that you would like to apply this to and you're going to draw this works I, draw a, I want to be like out of the glare so that would be nope that would be over here okay a circle okay and in this circle i want you to think about everything that you know already. What do you know in the world on any topic? And so for me, I would say, if this is all the knowledge in the world, everything that's possible to know, what do I know is maybe that much, right? And that's because I've gone to master's and post-master's education, but I don't know a lot compared to everything that's available to know in the world. So this, um, 
piece of the pie is everything that you know, you could draw your slice, however big you feel you want to do it. It's everything that you know, and you know that you know it. All right, so everything that you know, and you know that you know it. You know, you know it. It's kind of, I don't know if you can, you can't read it, but it says everything that you know, and you know that you know it. So what's something that you know you know? I know how to train dogs. I know, <laughs> I was gonna say I know how to cook, but some would argue with that. Um, you know, what do you know that you know? What did you go to school for, right? Those are the things that you, you know how to drive a car. I don't know how to drive a tractor trailer, but I know that I know how to drive a car. And I know that I don't know how to drive a tractor trailer. And that's the other piece, which I'm gonna make it be maybe about the same thing. This is all of the stuff that you know you don't know. So I know that I don't know how to drive a tractor trailer. I know that I don't know how to cook great Italian food. So I put in, I know how to cook, but in this one, I'm gonna say, but not really great Italian food. Um, I know how to garden, but I don't know how to raise crops. So people live their lives in these in this place these two pieces of the pie because even when we know we don't know something we go oh okay but i want to figure that out so i can go back to school i can research it i can get a book on it so we we decide if there's something we care enough about that we're going to move it from this piece of the pie which is i know i don't know up to the first piece and put it in where i know and i'll do that by going back to school or whatever i meant to bring something to wipe my Okay, got it. Um, so we live life right here. So what's going on all over here? And what's going on here is really where transformation happens. This is really where something opens up for your life that you had no idea about because in this area is your blind spots. It's all the things you don't know, and you don't even know that you don't know them. So you don't know it. And you don't know that you don't know it. So it's a blind spot. If anybody's watching the recording, they're gonna be like, I can't read that. But um, so the blind spot, that's like when you're driving, and you're going to merge in, and you you know, when you even look, has that ever happened where you even look and you put your blinker on and then you go and there's a horn like, and the, and the guy's like right there. And you're like, oh my God, I totally didn't see that. I did not see that car right there, even though I looked. That's your blind spot. And in life, when we stay right here, I know what I know. I know what I don't know. I'm going to decide whether I want to learn it or not. And we hang out here. Then all of this, we don't have access to. And that's like where we're going to, spend some time. That's what a transformation is. And that's what really all of what we're doing is talking about. All right. So does anybody have any questions on that? Okay. Can you see how like, oh, there's definitely stuff I don't even know that I don't know it? Or is it? Okay. okay. All right. So now I'm going to keep the circle. And I'm actually going to write two circles. I hate the glare. Okay, so two circles. In the first circle, and you can do this on your paper if you want. This first circle, I want you to write the words what happened if you're writing it. And the second circle is story. So Human beings have things that happen every day. Things happen and immediately, like without even a 
a separation in time, we, we create a story around what happened. We create, we add a meaning to it. It's just an automatic, every time, not gonna be without it story. And what happens is something happens, we create a story about it. Now we have that story and the story now becomes part of what happened for us up here in our head. It becomes part of actually what happened. But what happened is really just the facts, just the facts, not the story we make it. But they start to become collapsed, collapsed, collapsed. So you could pick something that's happened in your life. Even you could pick something around an event where you were worrying. And let's look at if somebody's willing to share something, I would love to hear it, where we look at what happened and the story. And let me give you another example or a couple, and then you can start to really see for yourself or if nobody feels like sharing something. But let's just say in your job, you go into a meeting and there's something that you've been working on and you wanna make sure the boss knows about it and whatever, and you, during the meeting, raise your hand or ask to be um, to, to say something. The boss says, not right now, we don't have time. And so the, what happened is you had something to say and the boss said, not now. Immediately, we create a story. Could be a lot of things. Could be, he's a jerk. Could be, I'm not important here. What I have to say isn't important. Could be, oh. He says it's an open door policy, but actually he really isn't interested in what I have to say. Or there it goes. I work on stuff and nobody wants to hear about it. Whatever the story is, I'm gonna give you a hint. As human beings, it usually isn't a good story. It's not the like a good scenario. We make it mean something bad. So we make it mean something bad about the other person or we make it mean something bad about ourselves. And then what happens is that story gets carried over into every conversation with the boss. So now the next day or two days later, you're at work and you see the boss again and the story is immediately there. What happened was the boss said, not right now. And you made it mean or I made it mean I'm not important. So now when I see the boss coming, my story is leading my brain. My story of I'm not important and he doesn't want to hear what I have to say is what's there. But all that happened is he said, not right now. So what could be are several other things. So let's take a look at that. I'm just going to shift from this frame a little bit so I can turn towards you. Okay, so another possible meaning you could give it is the boss forgot he's got another phone meeting in 10 minutes and he wants to cut the meeting short because he realized he has this other meeting and he didn't manage his time well. Could be that. Could be he's got a terrible headache and he just feels like, oh my gosh, I can't take on any more information right now. I'm just going to sit with what we've got. Could be he had to go to the bathroom, right? It could be a world of things, but what we make it mean immediately is something that's going to disempower us and that's going to now lead us into a place of affecting our relationship with that person. Is this making sense so far? Does anybody have like, I'm not seeing what you're saying? understand okay makes sense okay so you want to start to look at the places in your life where something happened and you made a story about it so i'm going to share two things from my life and then i would love if somebody wants to just dig into your own thing because it as we see that as we create these stories and meanings we can see how it then affects the choices that we make, 
the words we choose to have with certain people, the way we withhold ourselves because we're like, he doesn't care what, I, what I'm saying, so we don't speak up. All of that starts to happen. And what happened in the actual event isn't really any of that, right? It's all the story that we're creating. So I'm gonna share two just current things right now. So this is a conversation that I had uh, with my son actually this week. This is recorded. He will kill me if, the, if he ever sees this recording. So it's coming down in like 48 hours, but I'm gonna tell you. So my son's hairline is receding. He's 19 and it just started this year. And so of course with the pandemic, he hasn't seen a lot of friends, whatever. And it's really been bothering him. It's it's like he, he has a job and he spent $300 on hair products and he's rubbing stuff here and he's you know putting rosemary and sage oil and uh, not kidding, $300 in this like special shampoo. So it's very much bothering him. So this past weekend, he went down to the beach in New Jersey, we call it going down the shore because you go down the parkway. So he went down the shore and he saw a lot of friends from high school who hadn't seen him. And some people were teasing him about his hairline. And um, in fact, one girl said something very, I think several people, he was like, you know, when he started to talk about it, he said, 10 people mentioned my hairline. Now, he came back and I could tell something was wrong. Like he was shut down and it took him till like Monday to talk about it, but he was like, I am really unattractive. I don't know if you're friends with me on Facebook. My son is very handsome, just saying. Anyway, I get to say that I'm his mom, but he's like, I am, I'm so ugly. And he's like, I've been gaslighting myself that I think I'm an attractive guy and I'm not. And I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, mom, I'm not kidding. I am so unattractive and my like 10 people noticed my hair. Maybe that's a, even an exaggeration. But he, so he, so his story like grew and grew and grew. It went to, I'm unattractive. I'm not even likable. Like I was like listening to him like, oh my God. And of course the mama in me was just, I don't even know what to do. And then I'm like, okay, the coach and he's, he's never a request for coaching <laughs> from me, but I'm like, okay, Linda, hold on. What's, what's going on here? So I go, honey, what actually happened when you went down to the shore? What do you mean what happened? He goes, and it's not just that. I, in the last three weeks, I had dates with four different girls and all four of them, and this is true, because he would say like, oh, my date's off. All four of them canceled, like even last minute or that afternoon, whatever. He's like, clearly I'm not attractive. So I go, okay is it possible? Let's just see if we can come up with any other meaning. And he's looking at me like, you are an idiot. There is clearly no other meaning than this. So I go, is it possible? Let's just think about the dates first. When the girl, pick one, when they canceled, what did they say? Well, she said she had to work that night. I go, okay. Is it possible that you're all headed off to school and she's committed to making a certain amount of money and she had the opportunity to pick up extra hours. And by the way, you never dated her before. So she's like, she chose to, to date, to, I mean, sorry, to go to work. So we, he kind of was like really committed to being in his place of, no, I'm not attractive. Like he was just committed to staying there. You know how some people like you're committed to your story. So then I wasn't getting a lot of headway. I went a little bit down the road of his hair, but wasn't budging him. So I go, okay, honey, I'm going to share something about myself. So now this is what I'm going to share with you guys. And I can share more about myself and post it everywhere. But you, if you know me, right, you know that my marriage has ended. Does anybody not know that? I did a thing with my husband or my ex-husband a couple weeks ago. Um, and he had uh, an affair, started... <laughs> my son was four is when I realized he was having an affair and he now has a three-year-old child with that woman same same person and so obviously she's a lot younger than me right she has a three-year-old so I think she's 16 years younger than me and so when that all happened however many years ago that was 
the story that I made up. So what happened was Mike had an affair. Mike started another relationship. What I made it mean was I'm too fat. I'm too old. I'm too tired. I'm not attractive. I guess I know where my son got it from, right? (laughs) I'm not attractive. And I lived that story for years. I lived like it was the truth because for me, it was because I immediately collapsed what happened and the meaning that I gave it. And so what did that mean for me in my life? I became fatter, tireder, and older than I actually was because that's how I saw myself. If I'm, if, if I'm this way and he would choose somebody else younger, clearly that's who I am. So that's who I was. I was the story that I created. Am I making sense? Yes, totally. Okay. As I started to work in this world of transformation and on my life, and I got this distinction that this is what we do, I, was, I actually used that exact scenario to unfold something for myself. So I was like, okay, this man had an affair. That's what happened. That's just the facts. And What else could I make it mean besides I'm fat, tired, and ugly? Well, we had a chronically ill child. We had catastrophic medical bills and stress. And maybe he needed a place where he could go that was stress-free. That he could go and be like, oh, thank God, I can just spend some time over here and it's not... The, the stress of the fear of having a sick child, re- like a really sick child. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's a little of both. Who knows? I don't even know. All I know is he had an affair. So if I can pick the meaning, he had an affair because I'm fat, tired, and ugly, I can also pick a different meaning since I don't really know the truth anyway. So I can create, oh, he, how about he wasn't up to the stress of the household? I could even make it like to make myself feel better. He's a wuss or something. You know what I mean? Like I could make it be even like create a meaning around instead of having it maybe the problem. Right. Problem. And when I could go, oh, I could make it be that. Actually, I'm pretty amazing. I am handling things and he needed somebody to stroke him. I think that makes me pretty darn great. Now, that's also not true about Mike. Mike is, um, if you saw our conversation, we're friends now and forgiveness is part of my healing codes and it's all in the past. But it wasn't until I decided to, to look at the meaning that I was giving the what happened that I could share a different, I mean, create a different meaning and then live my life from a different place. Because if I was still living, I promise you, if I was still living in the meaning that when my son was four and five and six and seven and eight, that I was living in, I would not be here now talking to you. I would be a sorry, fat, tired woman who was, you know, doing some job and feeling sorry for herself. That's who I would be because I would have lived into that story. But I created a new story that says, I rock. And he just, you know, he needed a place to be stress-free. And that's what he did. Doesn't condone what he did. Like that's a whole separate conversation, right? Right. Doesn't condone it, doesn't forgive. He does forgive it. I do forgive him but I don't, I don't have to accept it. Like, okay, you know, I don't have to do anything that. All I'm doing is creating a meaning that now empowers me and my life. So I like to use that example because it's pretty much, that's like a big one. People are like, really? But look all day long at you and your life or the people, you know, as you're going in and out of the store. People create meanings in every conversation. I had a client who um, 
when people become my client, they do have access to my cell phone. And she sent me a text that she wanted to mail me something. She's in, I don't know, Ohio or something. So she wanted to actually mail me something. But I, when she sent me the text, she was like, I wanna send you this, can you just give me your address? And my brain just immediately went to email because we all email everything. So I, I put my email in and she goes, um, no, I'm sorry, if you don't, if you don't wanna give me your address, I understand. And I was like, oh, wait, so I'm reading the text and I go, oh no, no, I just thought you meant email. So I go, no, 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 it's okay, you can have my address. I don't think you're going to come over from Ohio and kill me, <laughs> you know, but like she, she immediately interpreted because I sent the email, mm -hmm. I did not want to give her my address. Right. I could see it in her response. So I go, Oh no, no, it's okay. I'll give you my address. And she was like, Oh, I just assumed when you responded that way. Right. So it's little things. She just, all I did was say, here's my email. And she was like, Oh, she doesn't want to give me her address. Oh, that, that's a private thing. I probably shouldn't have asked or whatever she, you know, I'm embellishing now, but whatever she made it mean. So all day long, you know, you could look at Eden. Well, I, I don't know your situation, but I have another client who um, has two daughters. She's a single mom and the two daughters are grown. I think one is my son's age and one is a couple years older. And this was in April. One of her girls, I think the younger one maybe, was going to Mexico as soon as like some travel stuff opened up. And, you know, she had all of this worry around her daughter's trip and going to Mexico anyway, let alone going during COVID and all of that. So we did a lot of work around the meanings that she, what was the meaning that she gave? Like, so my daughter's going on a trip. But as she started to unfold the stories that she had attached to that, she had all kinds of stories about her daughter, um, you know, maybe isn't mature enough to make this trip. And she wasn't going alone. She was, she was going with a group, I think. But she had all of these stories around it that was, you know, creating a lot of fear and worry. So when we looked at what actually are the facts what actually has she done in the past that you're gathering evidence about? You know, like my son gathering evidence of all these things about how he's obviously so unattractive. Um, so when we distinguished it out, she was like, oh my gosh, actually, now that I'm looking, I have way more evidence about what a responsible kid she is. Oh my gosh, I forgot she did this, this, and this and rocked it like she started to when she could separate out the what happened and the story now she could see a whole different way of re of relating to her daughter's trip but she was in fear and worry and upset and she's old enough to go and i don't want i want to tell her not to go and, and it was she wasn't sleeping at night it had become a big deal so we distinguished out the story and the what happened and she completely shifted where she was. And it wasn't because anything changed. There was no change in the circumstance. There was no change in any of the actual facts. It was totally how she saw it. So does, is, is there something that anybody would wanna work on? I mean, I could give you till the cows come home my own examples, <laughs> but you know, transformation really happens. It's not an insight about my life, right? It's not more knowledge. It's actually going through the process for your own life so that you get the difference. I have something, I've been sick for 32 years and I feel like I have tried everything under the sun and I'm still in the same place. And in fact, I've gotten worse the last couple of years. So I'm at this place where I don't really believe that I'm ever going to get well. Okay. Okay. So let's look. Let's first look at what you know and what you don't know. That first circle. So for the past 32 years, you had your pie piece of what I know about health. And you were doing that. And then... There was the second pie piece of 
I know I don't know, like, I know I don't know how to clear my gut. So let me go learn how to do that. I know I don't know um, how to detox my liver. So let me go do that. So you start to learn as you started to realize, okay, I thought I knew about health, but I didn't. So now let me learn about these things. Okay, so now those that's what's in your two pieces of the pie, right? But you didn't even know that there was other stuff you could do like healing codes, right? Did you even know that something like that existed? You didn't know that you didn't know it. Your thought you were doing everything that you could do but there actually is a whole realm of things that you just didn't realize were there and available. So that was a tool now, which now that becomes part of your piece of the pie of things you know and that you can use. But prior to like us having a conversation, you would, you were living in, I've tried everything. There's nothing else that I can do. I've been to doctors, I've worked on my gut, I've been on medication. I've been to nutritionists. There's clearly nothing else I can do. I'm going to be one of the people that never gets better. Right? Yes. But yes. there actually is stuff that you can do. You just didn't know it. You didn't know that there was stuff outside those pie pieces. Right? So we could go a lot deeper into the what happened and story, like what's your story, Kathy, about yourself and your life? Because I'm gonna say human beings will, the stories are never empowering <laughs> until we purposely create them as empowering like I did. The stories that first show up are always, and I don't know why, I don't have an answer to that. That's in the realm of, I don't know. Wait, I know that I don't know. It's in that pie piece. I know I don't know why human beings do that, but that's what they do is they, we go to the worst case scenario. I think it's probably like an innate way of our ego protecting us or our brain always looking for the threat. So we're, we're just like, you know, always that's where we go, uh, but that's a guess. I don't really know why, but the stories that we make are not gonna be good until you start to see you're making a story and then you purposely and intentionally choose one that does work for you. So my guess and what I know with really a lot of work over the years is um, something about your story for yourself is disempowering and it's an inherent disempowering story probably from when you were little and it's seeping into your health and into your relationship and into your life and that's like you know when i say we're we're talking to the tip of the iceberg like today that we're we're just going into the distinction of it then the work to do is all on that underneath the underneath the surface iceberg of where did that come from you know not like you have to go back into every memory, but there's a reason why we have those disempowering stories other than, you know, human beings automatically are negative, but the stories that we have about ourselves. I'll, I'll share one more piece of like that with, about my relationship with Mike, just to wrap up the conversation. But um, I met Mike actually how old was I? In my 30s. It was 1999. And it was at, I, I have always done work like this. I have always put myself in courses, put my, like, I want to learn that. I want to learn that. And so he was there and I actually was single at the time. And um, it was a course about, you know, who you are and living your life. And I was like, I want to find out why I keep picking the wrong guys. And so Mike was there and he was the opposite of any guy I would normally pick. First of all, he's black. I would never do that before. I would, would never have done that. And he's a huge presence. Like when he comes in the room, you think he, he must be like a football player. He's a big man. And um, he just has that presence and he's a big personality. And so I have always been oh, the guy who's everybody's noticing is not gonna notice me. That's just who I've been for myself. 
I have a story. And so I was like, hmm, all right, I'm going to practice on him. I'm going to practice talking to the guy that I would never talk to the guy. And lo and behold, we spent the whole weekend of that, that class together. We sat next to each other and, um, and we really developed a great friendship. So, but somewhere, and it comes from, I mean, I know where, but I just don't want to go into the whole thing now because we'll be here till four o'clock. Um, you know, I have a story about, yeah, not me. It's not me. Somebody else would get the guy, but not me. And that fed into when things got rough in our, in our marriage, in our life circumstances. Yeah, not me. And so he, you know, it's not, not something we said out loud, but it was my energy around myself and who I am, not me, not good enough, that he went, yeah, I guess you're not good enough. I'm going to go find somebody who is. Do you know what I mean? It was yeah, self-sabotage. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes along those lines for sure. It's, um, I would say, though, it's slightly different, Julie. It's like until you distinguish your underlying stories and beliefs mm -hmm. about yourself, they are sabotaging, but they show up when you're most pressed in life. They show up, you know, when life is going good, you don't have to dig deep and you don't have to rely on your inherent core beliefs because life is going good. But when life is not going good, then you have to show up and what shows up is the stuff that you haven't distinguished this the mm -hmm. stuff that's running the show in a bad way right. until you distinguish it mm -hmm. does that make sense yes totally. mm -hmm. okay so that's what i would say kathy is there is a whole realm of what you don't know how to how to heal yourself yet and you've you started to get a piece of it um with, like with the healing codes so just the story that you have around, I have 32 years of health issues, I'm not gonna get better. If you can, could you create, let me ask you, what other meaning could you create around that set of circumstances? 32 years of illness. The story is, I'm not gonna get better. What other story could you create around that? I know that I've learned so much that I wouldn't have learned otherwise. I mean, I'm a totally different person now. Um, and I'm always looking for the lessons and everything. And I think I, you know, that's been one positive as I've be, been able to pull a lot of lessons from all this. You know, if your life is great and everything's fine, you know, you wouldn't be focusing on those kinds of things. Okay, great. So you've got some great lessons, but I was thinking more of shifting your meaning. So the meaning that you have is I'm sick and it's not going to change. Or, or I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you said something like that. Like I've tried everything and I don't get better. Right. Okay. So this, here's the, what the facts are 32 years of health issues and you, you, you don't feel yet the way you want to feel. The story you put to that is, I'm, I must not be meant to be healthy. I'm not going to feel better. It's not going to get better. S something like that, right? What other meaning could you create around the facts of 32 years of health issues? And I'm, and I'm not where I want to be. I don't know what else to say other than what I just said, other than that when... And this is intellectual, it's not how I feel, but when I do get through it, I will be a stronger, healthier person who will have a different life than what, I'm, what I've had so far. Okay, so that's a great, I can see, so that even was just a shift from, I'm not going to get better, because what you said is, when I do get better, I will be stronger. So it started to create a meaning, maybe a meaning that... Um, would really serve you is I am tenacious and resilient and I just haven't found the answer yet. I just haven't found it yet. That shifts. 
I'm not going to get better, right? That's a very different story. One story is I'm not going to get better. The other one is I didn't find the answer yet. And you pulled into it. I've learned a lot and I keep trying, you know, like all of that. So you could embellish it to be, and what I know about myself is I'm not going to stop. And that's a meaning that would have you delve into that whole other part of the pie as opposed to stay stuck in this is what i know i've been doing it okay maybe i need to learn more about uh, mold toxicity or lyme disease right lyme disease maybe i need to learn more about lyme disease let me do that right so that keeps you stuck there but if you actually go wow there's a lot maybe that i don't even realize that i don't know and I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm a resilient person. And um, I can tell because I got 32 years of working at it. I just didn't find the results yet. Right? Just shift it. And that little bit is like, I could be, am I, am I older and fatter than the woman Mike is with? I am. Does that mean I'm an old, fat, tired person? No. Right? I just shift it to I actually provide something in the world that she'll never be able to provide because she didn't have a child that died. I do. So I show up in a way she'll never be able to. Now I feel empowered. Now I can go and create my life in a much different place in a different way than the other story, right? And now there's a long way. Now there's what? And you're helping many others along the way of your journey. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, that's like, that's like now. So what am I going to do with it? And this is what I've chosen to be my purpose, all of that, which is thank you for acknowledging that. But I'm just saying, if I didn't even shift the story, would any of that be possible? No, I wouldn't even be showing up anywhere. I guess I could say that that is what my objective is too, is to get through this and, um, help others if indeed it's the, the medication that I came off or tried to come off of, but was put back on. But if I ever do get the chance and I'm able to get off of it, you know, I can, I can be a source of information for others that's trying to do the same thing. I yeah. mean, that's, that's wonderful, Barb, exactly. like. To me, that's why we're here. And um, this is actually getting into a, a, another conversation that I didn't really want to, I don't really want to get into right now a little bit, but choosing what you've got so that you can go and do something with it. Choosing, I am a person who, you know, had a bad reaction to a medication, took me a while to figure it out. That's who I am. Now let me go. Let me go out. Choosing chronic pain. I have a client right now who's in chronic pain. It's getting better with the tools that we're doing. But before her story was, I'm a woman in chronic pain and I can't do things. I say no to things when people invite me because I'm worried my body's going to hurt. Okay. okay. Or choosing, I'm a woman in chronic pain and I'm going to show up in the world whether I have pain that day or not. I'm not going to say no before I even get out there. Oh. It is different. Yeah, it, 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 makes you, it makes you be different for yourself. It, it just transforms. That's the word. It transforms who you are for yourself, who you are in the world, who you are with the circumstances that you've got, because those aren't changing. Right? So you transform yourself around all of it. And now something different is, available. I, don't know. I don't know how you're going to overcome that. I don't know how it's going to pan out. But if you don't even um, see it from that perspective, there is no possibility, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you for sharing that, Barb and Kathy. So, so this is the piece that I to see this is one distinction understanding that we collapse what happened in our stories around it 
over and over and over again in small ways and in really big ways. And just, just notice like throughout the rest of today, the rest of the week, where you're doing that. And the trap is you start to notice the other people in your life. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that. They don't want you to, to like be telling them they're doing that. But just for you, it, it is helpful to like when you see that, because like when I see that with my, let's just say with my son, it was an issue between us, but I could clearly see something happened and he had created this whole big story around it. And if I didn't have this distinction to have a conversation with him when he was ready to, I would be as a mom buying into all of it. Oh my God, my son's depressed. Oh my God, what can I do for my son? Like I would be all wrapped up in the story. But it empowers me to go in my head. I was like, oh wow, this kid's totally in his story. All right, I got to wait till he's ready. He's clearly not ready. It might take two days of him lamenting and lamenting. But when he's ready... <laughs> like shift this for him so because I have that distinction I don't get pulled into his story either so that's where it's helpful I think so um okay so tomorrow's our last day and as I said these are um little pieces of the whole intensive program that um I do that will be starting I'm gonna start another one next week. My, I have one with six ladies now who's finishing up. I think they have three more weeks, but anyway, I'm gonna be starting another one next week so we can talk more about it tomorrow. I wanna to wrap like everything that we've talked about during the week and whether you decide this makes sense for you or it doesn't, that you have a couple of tools that you can take into your life, number one. And number two, maybe a plan of action for yourself in some way. If it includes me, great. I would love to be a part of it. If it doesn't, where you're going. So it wasn't just three days or four days that we spent together and things go right back to the way they were for you. Okay. Okay. All right, my friends. So have a great rest of your day. Do you notice how I didn't even bother sharing the Zoom link? I'm like, okay, I'm learning my lesson. Not even going there today. <laughs> ah, so anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.